Valencia was founded in 1919 and has played its home games at the Mestalla since 1923. In their entire history, they've managed to pick up a few trophies, including six Spanish league titles, eight Copa del Rey titles, and one UEFA Cup, the competition that's known today as the Europa League. From 1999 up until the end of the 2004 season, Valencia had one of their most successful periods in their club's history, winning a total of two La Liga titles, a UEFA Cup, a Copa del Rey, a UEFA Super Cup and playing two consecutive Champions League finals. The 1999-2000 UEFA Champions League campaign saw the Spanish club playing at a whole new level. However, they did lose the final to Real Madrid 3-0 with goals from uh, Fernando Morientes, McManaman and Raul Gonzalez. One year later, in 2001, brought Valencia even closer to a win in the final against Bayern and as it first looked like the bats were headed for a victory when uh, midfielder Mendieta scored a goal just three minutes into the match from a penalty to take an early lead. But Bayern equalized the score early in the second half, again from a penalty, forcing the game first into extra time and then into a penalty kick shootout. With their goalkeeper Oliver Kahn in great form, Bayern Munchen managed to win the shutout 5-4, sending Valencia's supporters in despair. Since then, Valencia have popped back into the Champions League every few seasons. However, last season they struggled in the league as they almost got relegated, finishing just two points above relegation. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to Valencia on FM24. So it has been chosen by you guys. So thank you very much for your comments. Nope for you too. Cool name, bro. Alan Hartman and Julian Radu. So Valencia it is. Now let's get into it. So first order of business. What I like to do when I start a new save. It's meet the squad, of course. And we'll go through each of these individuals. Let me just skip this. Arrange by positions. Uh, let's uh, remove these guys that are out on loan. Yes, move to okay. So we have three goalkeepers. Let's start with Jesus Christ. Just a sec, Georgie. Mamardashvili. Yeah, we're just gonna call him Georgie or the goalkeeper during commentaries because it's gonna be a pain in the ass seeing this guy's name uh, during the matches. Anyway, uh, he seems to be our first choice goalkeeper, and he is a good goalkeeper for uh, our level. Of course, you can tell that by his attributes. An important player that can still improve, left-footed, commanding goalkeeper, good command of the area, yes, 16, 16 communication, good reflexes, decent handling, kicking, one-on-ones, not that great. Physically, he could have been a little bit better. But I like the guy. I would like to build my squad around uh, Georgi Mamardashvili. <laughs> uh, wait, 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 wait. I have to remember that in Spain, every single player has a release clause. So let's take a look at that. Uh, contract details, 89 million. Yeah, that seems about right compared to his uh, value. I won't uh, give him a new contract just yet. He still has four years left on his uh, current deal. A 42-year-old goalkeeper, Jume Dominic, crystal ability, fringe player in his prime, he's a backup, it's nice to have a decent backup, and he is quite decent, gets crowd going, good for him, perfectionist, I like that, contract details, 50 million, great. And the guy that's probably going to leave, Cristian Rivero, 25-year-old, he's not bad. Or maybe I'm gonna keep this guy and sell the 32 year old. We'll see. Anyway, we have a few central defenders. Let's start with Gabriel Paulista, a 32 year old Brazilian. Wide center back, let's see you as a ball playing defender. His vision is not that great. Uh, he can jump, he can hit the ball. He's decent, he has good mentals. I like that. He's aggressive, perfectionist personality. That's great. Winds up opponents. Okay, dude. Next, we have Seng Oskakar. Something like that. He's probably Turkish. Yes, he is. 22-year-old important player who can still improve. I think he's better than uh, Paulista. Still a wide center back. Maybe I'll use wide center backs. He's uh, a powerful center back that likes to dive into tackles. Christian Mosquera, 19-year-old. 
lots of potential here. I can see him become a decent player. In FM22, he did become one of the regulars in a great team I had. I had Jose Gaia winning the Ballon d'Or in that underdog save when I was managing Valencia. That's something else. Unfortunately, his jumping reach is quite low for a central defender. Only 12. He has a resolute personality, which is great. Let's see his uh, release clause. 40 million. That's not bad. What about this guy's uh, release clause? 23 million. Yeah, I think I should give this guy a new contract. However, he has five more years on his contract. An 18-year-old Jarek Gasiorowski is probably Polish. No, he's Spanish, but with Polish parents, I guess. Information, yes, Polish. Okay, inverted wing back. Can cross the ball. Inverted wing back on defend, however. No, let's see you as a central defender. Ball playing defender, 16 jumping reach, heading 13, passing 16, technique 17. He's decent. He's decent. He has a future here. Mukhtar Diakabi. He's wanted by Napoli. 26-year-old central defender. In his prime, another wide central back. I might play wide central backs. We'll see. Jumping reach 16. Heading 16. Decent mentals. Decent physicals. I like this guy. He's an important player, of course. Only 15k per week. Brings ball out of defense. Hugo Guilemon, 23-year-old, defensive midfielder on support, can do a job as a libero, as a ball-playing defender. Okay, not that great. As a defensive midfielder, however, he's a decent player, 23-year-old, good value on him. Let's see his release close, 80 million. Okay, I like that. He's a decent defensive midfielder, tries long range passes, like to switch ball to wide areas and bring ball out of defense. So I guess he can do a decent job as a dim line playmaker. Yes, he can. Next, we have the captain, Jose Gaia, who's wanted by three Arab teams. I don't like that. He might want to leave. He still has uh, three more years on his contract. Star player in his prime, he's the captain, he's one of the best players. He had inverted wing back on attack and he has the right attributes for it. Professional personality, he likes to run with the ball and he gets forward whenever possible. I want to keep this guy until he retires from Valencia. On the right side we have Thierry Randall Correa, a 24-year-old complete wing back who has great physical attributes, decent mentals, and not that great technical attributes. Important player who can still improve. Not such a great value on him. Let's see his contract details. 100 million, I like that. Let me see Jose Gaia's contract. Sorry, I forget to go to this. Yeah, 100 million, that's great. Next, we have a 30-year-old Probably a backup to Jose Gaia. No, a backup to Correa on the right. A win back on defend. I might let this guy go. He wants regular football. I don't think I'm gonna give him that. He has a minimum release clause of 11 million. I'll take that for a 30 year old. Sure. Next, we have a 20 year old Jesus Vasquez. A backup to Jose Gaia, complete win back on the left. Decent attributes for a 20 year old. He can still improve. Not that much, though. Not such a great value on him. He does have a minimum release clause of 80 million. Yeah, I'm not going to get not even half of that. Pepelu, a 24 year old defensive midfielder. No, actually, he's a central midfielder that can play as a defensive midfielder. Okay, so we have two players that are natural. As defensive midfielders, not the blind playmakers, I might love to play with that role. Important player who can still improve. He's a regular starter. Okay. Next, we have a 20-year-old Heavy Guerra, advanced playmaker, important player, 20-year-old, lots of potential here, wonder kid, resolute personality. He has all the ingredients to become a world-class player. Let's see his uh, contract. 100 million, that's fine. He still has four more years on his contract. 
decent player. I like this guy. I like this guy a lot. Selim Amalak, a 26-year-old on loan. Decent central midfielder that likes to play on attack. No player traits. Yes, he's a squad player on loan from Real Valladolid. Yes, we'll uh, keep him around. Pablo Gonzalez, 22-year-old, not decent at all. Attacking midfielder on support. I'll probably just keep him around. Like they say, as an emergency backup, his contract will run out in a year. So uh, I'll probably let him go on a free. Andre Almeida, a 23-year-old midfielder. Central midfielder on attack. Fairly loyal. Shoots from distance. I like that. Tries long range passes, long shots 14, okay. A decent all rounder. We don't see any green uh, attributes, or at least not yet. A Portuguese player, okay. Next, we have a 21 year old Fran Perez, winger on the right. He likes to hug the line, so I guess we won't see him cutting inside anytime soon. Two and a half star ability for now. He has potential to grow. I don't know if he's going to make it though. Contract details, 10 million release clause and his value around five and a half or six. Maybe I'll give him a new contract. I don't know. Sergi Canos, 26 year old backup, squad player, winger, squad player with 40k per week. Yeah, I think I'm gonna let this guy go gets into a position area tries tricks okay dude he has a lot of player traits fairly determined winger in his prime moving on to rodrigo farova 23 year old striker brazilian emergency backup on loan for real madrid and we ain't paying him a dime okay i don't know why they loaned this guy Hugo Duro, what a cool name this guy has. He's wanted by Leipzig, 23-year-old striker, pressing forward. Okay, I like the pressing forward, but uh, can do a decent job as an advanced forward. Sure, of the ball 15. Finishing 14, not bad. Unfortunately, his physicals are not that great for a 23-year-old, but he's decent. We don't see any green attributes, but he's decent. If things go well with this save, this guy will eventually become a backup and we'll probably let him go at some point moving on to diogo lopez 21 year old inside forward on the left decent he has some potential of course there are some decent players here but i know not all of them are gonna make it roman yaremchuk on loan from a club bruges no, just a backup to Hugo Duro, I guess. And we have a 21-year-old striker who's injured for half a season, Alberto Mari, who was not that bad. Target forward, how about as a pressing forward? Yeah, he wasn't that bad. We probably won't see him play for Valencia anytime soon. If you guys are new to my channel and new to my saves, there's something you should know about how I like to play the game. First of all, when I start a new save, I disable the first transfer window, except for when I'm playing in the beta version. Because I like to start with the players that are already here. And trust me, if you guys choose to do this, you'll get to see that some players that you didn't even think about will really impress you. And unfortunately, some of them will disappoint. However, there are some players, and probably at Valencia as well, who are in their last year of their contracts, like uh, Paulista or uh, this guy, the experienced goalkeeper, that I'll probably sell. So you have some players that are uh, in their uh, last year of their contract and you want to get rid of, like uh, this guy. Just try and sell him before he enters his uh, last six months of his contract. If you offer him out in December, you might get some uh, offers for him. I also try not to let my personal knowledge of the game influence my decisions. I don't uh, go around searching for players right here. If you saw my save on Liverpool, at some point I signed uh, Uruni Bargi or whatever he's called from Copenhagen for just 11 million. I could do that at Valencia, but I don't want to unless my scout found him. 
that's why we have scouts to do their jobs, find players and recommend signings. I also uh, ask uh, the director of football to suggest some transfers. Yes, and that's about it. I don't search for players and I don't search for staff. Anyway, let's take a look at finances while we're uh, here. As you can see, we don't have any transfer budget because I disabled the first transfer window and we are spending over the wage budget with just under 20k per week. I'll choose uh, a tactic style of camera. I'll probably go with uh, Tiki Taka 433 or 4231. I'm not sure yet. Uh, I don't search for staff either. I just advertise and uh, see what's up. And uh, I give priorities to the coaches that are already at the club at the youth level and uh, they want a promotion and all. Yes, I don't search for staff either. Now let's see the club vision. Okay, the board only wants us to finish in the top half. That's great. And reach the later stages of the Copa del Rey. Of course, because Valencia last season almost got relegated, we're not going to be in Europe uh, this uh, season. We want to qualify for Europe, of course. Let's see the media prediction for uh, La Liga. Yes, uh, I've installed a logo pack, a face pack and the name fix. So we have Real Betis, Real Sociedad and not Real San Sebastian or whatever it was called. Media predictions. Okay, we're predicting to finish ninth. I think we can do a little bit better. I think we can qualify for the Europa League at least for the Europa League and maybe with a little bit of luck and a few good transfers in January maybe we'll even break top four right now let's uh, take a look at the schedule we have some uh, friendlies and the first game in La Liga takes place away at Real Betis so stick around I'll be back with just a second with our first game of the save before we get to play the first game away at Betis let's take a look at some tactics my main tactic will be this 4-3-3 DM wide with a Tiki Taka style. We're going to play with a uh, guy on attack, Randall Correa on support, two ball playing defenders. We have uh, a DM, just a DM, not the blind playmaker. A central midfielder on attack, an advanced playmaker, an inside forward on support, a winger on support and a pressing forward. I'm also training them the gag and press style, of course. And I also have a wing play tactic again a 4 free free with a dm wide i'm not gonna play with a number 10 in uh, this position no i believe uh, almeida can do a decent job here but he can play in this position as a central midfielder on attack if you guys want to see the set pieces real quick let's go to corners in attack jose guy is gonna take them on the right side and on the left side we have another player Fran perez yeah, there you go. We have uh, some players lurking around. We have uh, a box threat and uh, the aerial threat. I'll be aiming mostly for uh, the near post, just like I did with uh, Liverpool. Now, uh, I did uh, hire a bunch of staff. There's still plenty more to come. I've uh, fired my uh, head of youth because I don't think he was good enough. And I hired this guy. He's great working with the youngsters, good at judging uh, player ability and potential, resilient personality, which is important. He's determined and he likes my favorite formation, the 4-3-3 DM wide. And uh, let's meet my assistant manager. He was already here. I haven't hired a new one. I think he's decent. He's a perfectionist, which I like. He also likes working with youngsters and he has decent attributes for an assisting manager and he also likes the 4 3 DM wide. I've also hired as my chief scout. I'm not going to go through each of this uh, staff. Where are you, my chief scout? David Trezeguet. Yes, the former French international player. What a player this guy was. And he's great as a scout great knowledge of judging players and 18 adaptability which is great and a driven personality yeah he's my chief scout i'm happy he's here and we should also look at the dev central yeah if these are our first team candidates then we're not doing too well ivan munoz 
a central defender that can cross the ball jumping reach 10 strength 7 no thank you marco kumas 21 year old winger no and he's 21 Declan Frith inside forward on the left okay he seemed as a little bit better acceleration 16 pace 15 stamina only 9 balance 7 vision 6 oh my word no Neil Ruiz a 20 year old goalkeeper maybe backup in the future I don't know let's take a look at the squad this way Martin Teon 19 year old lots of potential here balanced personality i don't know if he's going to make it hugo gonzalez 20 year old winger judging by his mentals this guy seems a little bit retarded sorry hugo ruben iranzo no no and the under 19s okay i did make uh, some of the first team players available for the under 19s we have a 17 year old mark hurado winger on attack balanced personality with the right guidance maybe you'll make it vincent abril a goalkeeper 18 year old first touch one he has a first touch of one unbelievable 17 year old striker s year good dribbling finishing and first touch for a 17 year old but the rest of his attributes are jesus christ come on game <laughs> What are you doing to these players? And an 18 year old central defender, Mark Kust, who's determined, decent mentals, heading 14, tackling only 10. He can improve, maybe, I don't know. I just don't see any of these players breaking into the first team anytime soon. Now, let's play the first game away at Real Betis, uh, and uh, this is probably our best 11. So we have uh, Georgi in goal, we have uh, Jose Gaia, Diakabi, Gabriel Paulista, who recently said he wants to explore his options at the end of his contract, that's in one year, so I'll look to sell him in December probably. We have Randall Correa on the right, Gaiman as uh, the defensive midfielder, it's not Gaiman, I know it's Guillamon, something like that. Guerra as the advanced playmaker, we have Almeida as the central midfielder on attack, Diogo Lopez on the left as the inside forward, Frank Perez on the right as the winger, and Hugo Duro, the guy with the cool name, as a pressing forward. Hopefully we won't start this save with a defeat, Real Betis are favorites to win the game, but I believe in the boys that we can at least get a point here. Here we go then, our first highlight, Isco takes a free kick, a corner, sorry for... Uh, Valencia, Hugo takes it away, Bartra, Mark Bartra, the guy that uh, was playing for, uh, oh, what a mistake there for uh, Barcelona at some point, Frank Perez on a counter-attack, Frank Perez, mate, back to Thierry, Randall Correa, Guerra, Hugo Duro, Lopez, we're one it up, come on, Diogo Lopez, there was another Lopez that was great for Valencia back uh, in the early 2000s when I was a teenager. You guys that are over 30, at least 30 now, probably remember him. He was named Claudio Lopez. He was an Argentinian player, if I remember exactly. He was great for Valencia. Anyway, back to 2023 and we're tuning up. Jose Gaia with a great assist for uh, Diaca before from a corner, that near post corner that... Uh, we love and enjoy here on uh, my channel. <laughs> Great header from the Akabi and it's 2-0. Let's go, boys. Two shots on target, two goals for Valencia, no shot at all for Real Betis. We are in control of this first half. Unfortunately, even though we play uh, a tiki-taka style, uh, we don't have possession. Oh, Rodri scores for uh, Real Betis and uh, they're back into this game. They do have some good players, Real Betis. I saw Hector Bellerin as well, Rodri Isco. Here we go again. That's a red card for uh, Randall Correa. Dude, what the hell? And yeah, it's over. 
for crying out loud for crying out loud who's gonna take his place we do have a 30 year old yeah this guy i'm gonna sacrifice i don't know who i want to sacrifice almeida i'm gonna keep uh, gera and uh, the dm yeah let's try it i'm not going defensive or anything we're just gonna play the our tiki taka style and see what happens here we go again they're building from the back bellerin to rodri rodri moving forward oh oh boy oh boy look at that passing and juan miranda equalizes is 2-2 with 10 minutes left from uh, this first half an impressive and spectacular first half so far let's be honest four goals in just 45 minutes can we get away with a draw? I don't think so. I believe we're gonna lose this game because of Randall Correa. Right, it's half time. 2 2. You have been unlucky. Yeah, sure. I'm gonna tell Jose Gaia to be careful. We don't want another red card. And let's encourage them. Okay, here we go with, uh, of course, Real Betis in control of the ball. We get the ball back though. Javi Guerra, mistake there chance for uh, Real Betis a real chance here good tackle from Guerra but they still control the ball here's a uh, Miranda the guy that equalized moving forward he's gonna take his shot over the bar we got away with it William Carvalho comes in for Real Betis another known player Gabriel uh, Paulista has suffered a bruised ankle and he gets replaced by Mosquera Bellerin now moving forward he's gonna cross the ball and they're gonna score Oh, what an opportunity and how lucky was the AKB not scoring an own goal there. Jesus, we got away with it. There's a corner. Tell me it's the end of the highlight corner, please. Oh, oh, another good opportunity. Okay, let's play for set pieces like my assistant is suggesting and let's make some substitutions. I should replace Fran Perez with Selim Amalak, the guy that won from Real Valladolid. He's right footed, okay, he can play as a winger, sure. Anybody else? Hugo Gilamon is quite tired as well, but I don't have anyone else. I didn't talk about our injuries. We have Pepelo injured for around three weeks, so there's uh, no one to play that DM role instead of uh, Gilamon. Diogo Lopez. Diogo Lopez! Uh, a good opportunity, it was close, over the bar. 15 minutes remaining. And uh, we're still causing troubles to you, Real Betis. We are uh, still threatening their uh, goalkeeper, Rui Silva, for uh, Bellerin now. Bartra. Can we be just a little bit lucky and get away with a point? I don't want to start this save with a defeat, but it might happen. Bartra to Bellerin. Rodri. We almost got the ball back there, but they're still in control. Here's Bellerin again, Bartra, come on Isco, that's another red card for crying out loud, what the hell, what the hell, what the hell, oh boy, now I should go defensive I guess, no I'm gonna go on cautious, what the hell am I going to do, Jesus Christ people, yeah I'm gonna move Gera here I guess, but there's a DM, can do a decent job. Winger on support. I'm gonna keep Duro up front. Let's start wasting some time. Time wasting, yeah. No. No. Be more disciplined. Let's see what's going to happen. Two red cards in our first game of the save yeah we're gonna lose the game now Rodri takes a corner Bartra to Bellerin shot blocked again oh huge opportunity away please and the highlight already oh another good opportunity that's a goal kick oh no another highlight five more minutes remaining don't do it don't do it Isco come on Aviguera was there, but of course they get the ball back as uh, they're pushing forward for a winner here. 
as they should William they've done it or maybe not come on VAR come on VAR be on my side please disallow the goal Georgi Mamajdasvili did I say that right I don't know he has a cool name okay it's disallowed we got away with it for now please no more highlights please end the game end the game okay very defensive I didn't clicked on it because the highlight started and here's Isco to Rodri they had their opportunities to win it six minutes at it Iglesias and uh, is not Enrique we got away with it again fucking highlights come on Isco Mosquera gets the ball back Gera we're not gonna score with two less players on the pitch Hag Gaia to Lopez just cross it just cross it mate Duro is there shoot Aviguera shoot mate Amilag who got oh my word what a huge opportunity oh oh boy imagine imagine if we actually scored the winner there that would have been the most FM game ever <laughs> Bellerin Bellerin and it's in again offside again VAR is gonna disallow it he, he seemed offside please disallow it please a spectacular game we had on our hands no goals in the second half but come on be over blow the whistle there you go two red cards for us our best performer the AKB. with a little bit of luck we could have gotten all three points if Hugo Duro didn't miss that huge opportunity in stoppage time okay i really hope you guys enjoyed this episode and i hope you will stay with me throughout the entire save next episode we'll jump ahead to this away game at real madrid athletic bilbao and we'll end the episode at camp nou with a game against barcelona if you guys enjoyed it, please subscribe to the channel, hit the like button, leave a comment, let me know your thoughts on the tactics, and the players, if you have any tips, suggestions, I'll be willing to listen to them. Thank you guys very much for watching, I'll see you for the next one.